so generally this topic is uh, belongs to computer science i should say because uh, they are dealing with this graph theory every day and uh, unfortunately if you are not studied something called finite state machine which is also part of graph theory which is known as fsm you should study that maybe from uh, somewhere from maybe nptel or maybe on somewhere you will find out you need to maybe look at sequence detector and sequence generator but how how did you find out the sequence detector and generator without making fsm we studied like find kind of state variable man okay so yeah that is also part of uh, you can say that it's also graph but uh, excuse me, you are too much late already two guys has been uh, like uh, removed from this this class shashi right you should be on time so what were you doing sleeping <laughs> okay still i can see you sleep on your face <laughs> anyway, so yeah if you know this thing it's good right but in the in the form of ones and zeros right anyway so this is a part of that uh, um, topic known as a uh, graph theory so i am following the uh, same book ziri black and uh, piso singhal and uh, chapter number 3 we are following there is only one book was available <laughs> but uh, my student has issued it if you like you can take uh, maybe uh, maybe xerox of two chapters we are only studying two chapters can can you provide just xerox of two chapters and we will keep it maybe in common room those who wants they can take it right and if you want like online it's available right okay so himanshu has already uploaded uh, somewhere on moodle he has uploaded by the way it's illegal that's why i have not uploaded you can give the link or you can mail them if you want we'll take it afterwards okay so again we are as we are electrical engineer we are following kcl kbl those are the fundamental things right so here there might be two different networks n1 and n2 both are connected if you make the cut set somewhere here then the total current will be on the basis of how many are uh, coming positive side how many are going negative side all sum will be zero at the end that is what kcl says but we are going to study in different way for the graphs if you have voltage source or current source you are going to replace that with some line which we are going to call ages ages in plural so there are two so i am calling ages for voltage or current both the both the time you are going to call or you are going to draw some line which you are going to call ages so for voltage and current it's same there is no change if you remember the state diagram it was like this yeah amol yes sir something like this One zero and something, huh? There were some arrows, and on the basis of arrows, all these things you have done. So these lines are known as edges, right? And these circles are known as nodes. So if I am using the word node, means it's node, and these lines are known as edges or a, right? So any element, if it is there, voltage, current, or anything, it will be replaced by a line. by chance uh, have you heard about cpm critical path method okay by the way have you seen a beautiful mind yes sir how many have seen that okay only very oscar oscar movie <laughs> john nash john nash game theory heard about him or no right so if you remember the uh, incidents when uh, he was playing uh, some chess or something right with somebody and he lost and he is saying uh, i cannot lose the game because i started from the last like he is starting from the winning side like if 
there are two guys who are actually playing so what he was doing at then he already won and he go back and kept all these you know, like uh, all those things at at the place where it has, uh, it has to start at the zero this is called back propagation algorithm you are starting from the the last thing and when you are doing this you are uh, running on the critical path so he was applying that critical path method and uh, there is something called end, end algorithm so we are not going to study that but if you want to study that it will be good algorithm because you know about end algorithm have you heard about okay end algorithm is the one where like how end is uh, going to find out sugar sugar cube so what path she is going to take so there might be many many places like there is an end and this is sugar cube so she can go from here she can go from here she can go from here so if you have watched that movie like there is pigeon was a uh, right pigeon was going and finding out its food so like he was also following some algorithm and he was working on that algorithm right so this end algorithm is depending on that so which path you are going to choose so going from here to hostel that may might be many paths but which path you are going to choose it depending on two things one is called uh, uh weight weight of this path and one is distance sometimes let's say if it is raining outside you are not going to take the uh, smallest uh, shortest path but you are going to take the longest path because its weight is smaller so ultimately weight time distance will decide so that is what critical path method is maybe somewhere you are going to study in future this is going to be actually people are studying in engineering uh, math engineering management they are studying in that generally right so and this is used in every processor design right end algorithm and we are calling critical path method or some somewhere uh, soldering. Hmm? not soldering look let's say this computer is running but how this current is flowing what is the best path is it is taking you may have let's assume that such kind of logic levels are available right so which path will be the will be the one which is going to take the longest path right because every logic gate will take some time to propagate the the logic from 1 to 0 that is known as propagation delay so in total let's assume that it takes 1 nanosecond from here to here in critical path critical path may be this one or some somewhere else out of billions of gates you will have only one path or there are billions of paths and you are taking only one path which is the critical path and that should take smaller time than your processor speed right so that is how it goes so that's why i am saying end algorithm is very much important to finding out the the shortest and longest path that is how it goes right so this is also part of graph theory right so all these things are very much important when you are choosing or if you are civil engineer if you are electrical engineer mechanical anybody graph theory is the most important thing or anything uh, in the world if you want to design it you can design it using graph theory so there are well established theory which is known as finite state machine where all the states will have finite zeros and one only but in our electrical engineering we will not have ones and zeros we will have something else so those theory we are going to study so fsm if you are not studied it's next step or topic of what you have studied in your digital as you are saying state variable method right that next one is fsm it's part of your automata theory or it's also part of digital system design practicum so anyway so as i told you there are some definition for uh, age age is the one which is the line we are going to call it age each elements are connected between nodes so all the circular things here are known as nodes right current flow uh, flow direction via an edge is from higher to a lower voltage node generally this is what we follow but orientation of the graph may be arbitrary when i am saying orientation means there is every edge will have some some arrow either like going from left to right or right to left if it is not there then it's 
it's it's not known as oriented graph if the direction is known then it's orientation and the most important part it's arbitrary as i told you we are developing a, a simulator so after learning this course you are going to let's say learn a, how to make the simulator so simulator does doesn't know what is going to happen at the beginning so as voltages are not known before an analysis so you are going to you don't know that each each node will have some different voltage so which node is higher or which node is lower if both side is zero so both are equal so you have to find out some arbitrary method right but by observing the circuit you know which node has to be positive and which node is negative so that's how you are going to make it but it's arbitrary everybody will have different graph but the, at, at the end of the day if you want, want to find out the transfer function Bode plot stability all answers will be same graph will be different but answer will be same right so it depends on all your assumption how you are taking the assumption right okay yep, yep. so any doubt in uh, all these things right then we are moving ahead okay let's assume that this is a this is a circuit so how many nodes we are seeing except ground three right one two and three actually there is fourth node also which is zero by the way so we are not going to neglect that ground node for admittance matrix we are neglecting the zero potential however in graph theory we are not going to neglect it so there are four nodes in reality so all nodes are going to be replaced with such kind of node structure and they are connected by edges let's call this edge as 4 this as a 5 this as a edge as 2 so i am giving this number on the basis of like c1 c2 c3 are given so i am giving that number <coughs> is it difficult to draw a graph right so whatever we made just now that is known as graph and through graph we can analyze uh, what is going to happen so as i told you it's arbitrary those direction because we want to make the oriented graph so if you want to make oriented graph i'm going to start with like from zero let's make this direction and for others let's make this direction right so it's my graph so i'm following my own uh, own way of doing this because at the end of the day kcl and kvl will work and uh, it will give you all the all the currents which are going inside and outside will be zero the summation will be zero so that will work right so i took the actually this numbers and all or the arrows which was taken by ziri black that's what actually i did right so now KCL equations using orientation of the graph. So what orientation I made on the basis of I can make the KCLs but current which are flowing away will be positive. One more time because this is the question you asked me last time. Which side is positive, which side is negative. So let's agree that current flowing away is negative, uh, away is positive. You can make reverse also by the way if you will follow reverse still kcl will be zero right at the end of the day okay so now i want to write down at node number one so can you tell me what could be the current so at node one you can see like, there are three paths going away is negative okay positive so going away is positive i4 i6 and i1 is negative that is equal to 0 at node 2 4 5 and 2 so 2 and 4 are going away and five, uh, sorry 5 is going away and 2 and 4 are coming in so that is equal to 0 similarly at node 3 we can write down now if you have written this we can write down the matrix also For, for this one we can write down the matrix 
in terms of two things one side you will have nodes one side you will have edges so similar to admittance matrix you are going to write down one two three and this side you are going to write down one two three four five six because edges are six right so when you are going to write down current at so what we are writing right now this matrix is known as incidence matrix and it is denoted with a capital a so incidence matrix can be found out by many ways either you can apply kcl or you can also apply kvl like the previous time when we were doing admittance matrix and impedance matrix right so you can apply anything whichever you want right now we are learning kcl so at kcl we found out at three nodes you are going to have different current equation but same thing you can write down from here so at node 1 you have 1 4 and 6 so 1 4 and 6 are there others are not available so they are 0 right those who are going away it's known as positive and those who are coming in negative so 4 and 6 are positive and 1 is negative similarly we can write down for node 2 node 2 is equal to can you tell me what is going to happen here zero minus one zero minus one one and zero can you talk about the last one look i'm writing what you are saying yeah is it minus one zero 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 Huh? You just tell me because I am not seeing the graph. I am uh, trusting you only. Hmm? 0, 0, zero minus 1, 0. Okay. So at node 3, you have 3, 5, and 6. So 3, 5, and 6 all in minus. Yeah. So is there any difficulty in writing this? So this is also ultra easy. Right. And you can have this. So, uh, like you are expert of, similar to uh, admittance matrix, you have also become expert of uh, uh, the incidence matrix. Yeah, so any doubt? You, any doubt? I'm asking you, not Gaurav, not Gaurav, who is behind Gaurav? Yes, because you are, so between you and him and you and him, there are lots of parasitic capacitances and you are making some frequency signal which is going in his uh, ears right and then you are making laugh so that is also making some noise so, so that is known as a parasitic but from your line to my line it's becoming crosstalk which is unwanted for me <laughs> right so you are going to have n number of rows and b number of columns n being ungrounded nodes and B being the edges, right? So the matrix may not be the square matrix. It will be three uh, N cross B matrix. Sometimes it might be square. By the way, can you tell me, is it a planar gra a graph or non-planar graph? Planar or non-planar? Planar, okay, right? So if, so uh, how do you say that it's non-planar or planar? No overlapping. Okay. So no overlapping. So that's called uh, planar. If it is overlapping, non-planar. Okay. So this thing can be proven and you are already uh, like expert of uh, algebra and linear algebra so you can check that ring of a will be equal to n you can prove this overlapping means overlapping and 
This is the whole happening. <laughs> Which one? Actually, what he is saying is correct. What you are saying is correct. So this one is non-planar graph. It's not planar. I can draw this way also. Right? That is what you are saying. Am I right or wrong? So this one is non-planar because there is one edge. I forgot that. That edge is actually crossing. Okay. Now. So as you are expert of KCL, using KCL you can write down incidence matrix A. Similarly you can write down using voltage form. So if it is voltage form, at ages you need to check and this is also one of the reason for those who are my PhDs and masters, I can tell you and even Himanshu, you must have heard that if you are using, there is one tool called Cadence, which these people are using for spice simulation. So you must have uh, experience. If you want to measure voltage, you need to go to ages, right? You must have experienced this. So we are saying that it's a uh, this simulator is giving some wrong things, but it's not wrong because it's following the graph. At ages, you can measure voltages, and at nodes, you are measuring KC, uh, currents. That's why. It is following that. So at ages, at ages you are going to measure voltage. And at node you are going to measure current. Okay. So it's different than what, what is known to you, right? And that is what all the simulators are doing. If you select the, the line, you can measure voltage at that line. That is what going to happen. So if I want to measure this voltage, which I am going to call it V4, that is going to equal to Vn1 minus Vn2. So the difference of this point to this point is going to be uh, declared as V4. Similarly, if I want to find out V6, it's V1 minus V3. And look at the direction of the current. And V, uh, V5 is equal to Vn2 minus Vn3. Similarly, you can write down all, right? Hmm? Yes. So, at this particular uh, age, that voltage is defined as the difference of these two, right? Because at this particular uh, age, there has to be something like resistance, capacitance, or maybe voltage source, or maybe current source, something will be there. So, we assume that there, there will be some voltage drop. And that voltage drop will be V1 minus v, Vn2, right? It depends on node. But if you want to measure voltage in simulator, you have to select this line, not this one. If you select, if you select this node, you are going to see the current, not voltage. That is what happening. So if you are going to use simulator first time, you will understand the current will be measured at node which is wrong theory than what we are doing in uh, actually a laboratory. We are measuring the voltage at node, right? Okay. So, similarly, you can write down V5. V5 is equal to Vn2 minus Vn3. So, Vn2 minus Vn3. So, first one is Vn1, first, second Vn2, last one Vn3, right? So, similarly, you can write down the entire matrix. Let's say for V1, it's it's what? What should I write here? Hmm? Minus 1 or plus 1? Minus 1, 0, 0. What about this one? So, V0 is not there, but it's 0. Right? The current is coming negatively, right? It, it's equal to zero, right? So you can write down the whole thing, which will look like this one. If you observe this, it's transpose of what we have done in KCL. It will be exactly same, but the transpose of the previous incidence matrix. So it's taken from there. So if this is AI equal to zero, this is 
a transpose times vn equal to v because that is going to follow the kvl and this is going to follow the kcl this incidence matrix and this incidence matrix are same just only thing is they are transpose of each other right yeah any one of the method you can take right A any doubt this is very easy right akshita are you following right the on uh, unfortunately like when the course is going ahead maybe you'll keep on forgetting the things so these things has to be on on your fingertip i'm teaching this for one reason this is a going to be used for some of the campus interviews like ti ti is asking such questions right so that's why i'm teaching some of the things which are which are not written in your syllabus also right okay so if you learn this then i can go to the the real graph theory through which you are going to find out the transfer function or the voltages or current at the given node because our ultimate goal is this circuit will it work or not this is what we want to make or whether this, the circuit is stable or not all these things we want to find out the dynamics of the circuit the frequency response the time response this is what i want to find out so for that i am developing uh, an analysis through which the answer will be coming very quickly the transfer function i want so transfer function will be very quick this is what i want so now so right now without understanding how i made these these lines the, which are known as cuts that cut set rule is part of like third or fourth slide after this so that rule i am going to teach after three four slides but before that just to understand this kind of graph is known as oriented graph the reason is all the orientation is already defined right this is the same graph which we have drawn just now or you can say it is for this circuit we are actually dealing with this circuit only it's same graph and these are the nodes and other directions are the edges now if there are cuts are given so there are three cuts c4 c5 and c6 can be observed right you should also look at the direction of so c4 is in this direction right still it's arbitrary by the way okay it's up to you how you are taking this right so when i'm making this cut c4 i am going to associate it with following things so it is cutting <coughs> it is going to cut this one this one this one and this one right so there will be four edges are going to be cut by c4 and i am going to write down in terms of currents as follows so this c4 is in uh, you can say it's in anti clockwise direction so you have to look at the current uh, direction is it similar side so this is this side so this is also this side so i6 is positive i4 <coughs> is also positive because it's also in same direction <coughs> i2 is also in same direction so i2 is also positive and i3 is also positive now similar to that let's write down what is going to happen at c5 c5 is this one so when okay so so tell me i'm going to write minus i1 minus i1 minus i2 plus i4 i5 okay plus i6 is equal to 0 right similar to this we can write down for c6 so yeah if you cannot see some people if they are not following this is the line which is going from here right so plus i1 right plus plus i3 no there is no Okay, three is there minus plus i three 
माइनस आई फोर प्लस आई फोर का प्लस आई फाइव इज इक्वल टू जीरो राइट थ्री इक्वेशन सो दीज थ्री इक्वेशन आर ऑन टॉप ऑफ वॉट यूर स्टडीड विच इज इंसिडेंस मैट्रिक्स सो करेक्ट इक्वेशन आर क्यू या टेल मी ओके लेट्स लुक एट द सो विच वन यू लाइक सी फोर सी फाइव सी सिक्स सी सिक्स एट सी सिक्स यू आर गोइंग टू हैव दिस डिरेक्शन राइट द करेंट डिरेक्शन इज दिस साइड if you rotate it little bit if you can imagine this plane and you can see it's going from left to right it's going from left to right so left to right is positive if it is right to left it's going to be negative now let's start from here right this is the first first cut right so which direction it, it is going because it is from here to here so you need to completely rotate it if you imagine it's going to be left to right it's going from left to right it is same as c6 both are going in same direction right now sorry uh, sorry 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 yeah so sorry yeah so this cut has coming from right to left sorry so this is minus right because it's different direction than what c6 had right now look at this one so it is going from 1 to 2 which is left to right which is same as c6 now for i5 it's also same direction and for i3 it's same direction right कौन सा पुराना सो आई वन इज अ पॉजिटिव सो C6 is going this side. So from this side we can say it is perpendicular to that edge. Okay, I need to see one second. I'll get back to you maybe tomorrow. Just Because I need to again look at this. If it is perpendicular to this one, then it's positive. Yeah, yeah. That is what I was following at the beginning. That you have to, for him I was uh, assuming that this is going to be rotated, going from this side to this side. right so it's going from actually from left to right so it has to be positive right okay i'll get back to you next lecture okay without making this mistake okay but before that just uh, learn few more words because today we don't have much time just to understand some of the words like tree twig and cords any one of them have you heard about all of any one of the tree bahar wali nahi graph graph theory tree so what is tree hmm? so uh, if it is like this huh? mm -hmm. oh that tree okay that is also tree yeah so this is called binary binary tree you mean to say you mean to say if there is let's say something like this this is called binary decision diagram or binary tree you are right you have seen this one only uh, the nodes can have more uh, so this is also hierarchy right and uh, this is known as binary decision diagram or binary tree 
so you are right but uh, there is another way to define tree tree is a connected graph so the graph we have drawn just now six was here one was here something was there right so so this graph has like connected sub graph connecting all the nodes so look at this line connecting all the nodes but there will not be the close path that is going to be known as tree okay so if we are following that at this node i need to connect to all of them right it's connected but it's not close right if i am doing this this is not allowed okay it's, it's allowed but it's not going to be known as tree afterwards that's the thing right so this is one tree there might be many other trees like if i want to make tree at this node right i can make other tree also like right other also like i'm i'm drawing all the possible thing right so those edges which are part of tree so edges which are part of tree are known as twig so if i am considering just a tree which is connected with one which is like this so all the green color edges are twig because it's part of tree and all others are known as cord right so that is what written here any edge in the tree is called a twig the remaining edges not included in the, in the tree form a cord tree and edges of cord tree are called cords right hmm? how can we say where, where is the close path there is no close path so there might be the possibility if i am using this also part of tree right if i am making this edge as also part of tree then it's close can you see there is a close path so it's illegal or it's not considered as tree still it's sub graph but not not a tree something else right and following this because using these definitions only we will find out way to how to cut set so this creation is also depending on those trees and uh, uh, twigs right so these definitions are very much important okay so now cut set rule how to cut any edge or so first of all cut has to go through all the nodes okay it has to go to uh, go through only one twig one twig and others as many cords as when you can take right so this has to be there so if you can see here the cut set if you look at c6 it is passing from here so okay first of all we need to define a tree first of all that is that is left so that is the rule so you have to give the numbering as follows so this is numbering also depends on you this is given by a book but it's not 
universal you can give other numbers also sometimes some people are giving abcd some people are giving alpha beta right so we are following numbering because this book is following same so assign orientation to the ages this is one thing which will be easier select one tree so there might be many possibilities but you have to make one tree and accordingly everybody will have different answer if you are selecting some different tree your answer will be different than what i am doing now assign consecutive integers starting from 1 to the twigs and continue numbering to the chords so that next number will go to twig and thereafter all the chords will have some numbers okay so there is a tree do you agree with this one this is a tree right you could have made something else also then the answer will be different means using this analysis this cut set answer will be different the ultimate answer for the analysis will be same you may have this one also right just you have to make sure that it will go through all the nodes and it will not create a closed path you may have this one also or you may have this one also right yeah okay and when i am doing so i am going to make the first chord as c1 because as i told you assign the consecutive integers numbers starting from 1 to the twig so this is a twig right so one twig and other chords are possible so there is only one twig others are not part of tree those ages you need to select which are which are going to give you chord similarly if i am making second chord by the way as many number of twig you are seeing that many number of c1 c2 c3 cuts you need to make so if you have three twigs you are going to have three cuts so first cut will be on first twig, second cut will be on second twig and thir third cut will be on again the third twig. Right? So when I am looking for second uh, twig cut, it is going from here to here, then it is cutting second twig and fourth and four, five ages of different tree. Similarly for third, you can make three out of which one will be twig you cannot take more than one twig here yeah. so that is also up to you arbitrary right towards center means going from here to here I can make this one from here to here also. All the equations will be different thereafter. That's the beauty of uh, this uh, graph theory. You can make your own uh, decisions. Like uh, I generally follow only one thing. I only follow anti-clockwise. I don't follow any random thing. Although it's random, but I follow only one thing, which is anti-clockwise. It's up to you. You can make all the clockwise also. Then this will go this way. Right? This will be clockwise. This is clockwise. All clockwise. Now. Right? Okay. So, still this equation holds, which is for incidence matrix. And I can write down for first chord, it's I1. Okay. we'll get back to you maybe next time because the direction is still confusing right yeah. yeah so it's going so it's going from yeah so it's going this side for c2 you are saying okay what is what are you saying for c2 direction is this side 
so this is this is positive right i2 because it's going from left to right similarly this one is also going from left to right so this is also positive and this one what about this one perpendicular you are saying something but hmm. no, no, it will not be so, uh, so much completed don't worry okay next time we will talk about it by making uh, everything crystal clear from my side i'll sit and i'll find out okay